Alright. I am today going to cover uh, a blog part about all this little chaos here. Animals in Islamic tradition and Muslim cultures by uh, Richard Fultz. Richard C. Fultz. Uh, I happen to study a lot of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And I want to talk about certain topics from them. I'm not actually promoting uh, religion nor uh, demoting it. I'm actually staying away completely from a debate about religion and I want to just talk about things in an informative way. So I find it interesting this book because the author is just simply wanted to explore the way that animals are viewed within the Islamic world. That's, that was that author's particular interest. Now if you look uh, in the Bible, you know, a serpent um, is one who tricks Eve into sinning against God, disobeying her. Uh, in Christian tradition, that serpent is actually you know, Satan. But um, even in the Epic of Gilgamesh, an ancient text from Mesopotamia, a serpent steals the flower of immortality from Gilgamesh. Um, so, you know, these texts do have, you know, bring up certain ideas about animals in relation to humans. And, of course, in Jewish law, uh, certain animals are considered acceptable for food and others are ex not, right? Now, in, in Islam, what I thought, found interesting is that in this text he points out, and this is not that different really from Judaism and Christianity, but it's maybe a little more explicit that, that man is made khalifa over the earth or vice-regent of God, and that there's a hierarchical system. Animals are made for humans, so eating of meat, uh, except for like let's say pigs. So Islam has dietary rules just like uh, Judaism does, but you know not 100% in the same way. Um, that animals serve man in this way, and at the same time, animals do have communities, even language, and. Um, According to uh, uh, Islam, animals are perfect Muslims. In fact, this author points out that there was a, a, an Iranian um, instructor in, in a small town in America, and a, a friend of his says, how do you feel about being the only Muslim in this area? And he said, uh, what are you talking about? I'm surrounded by all these cows. Now that, he was kind of tongue-in-cheek, but what he's basically saying is that animals are full Muslims. Why? Because only humans have taqwa, or the ability the, the, uh, to comprehend God and his attributes, or free will. And so this is interesting, right? An animal is in the lower position, can even be used as food for God, I mean for man, sorry, by God, excuse me. But animals are perfect Muslims because they go by instincts, which God implemented. Only a human can rebel, or uh, become a kafir, an unbeliever to make choices, right, to do shirk, uh, uh, idolatry, something like that. And so this is the, um, you know, kind of interesting position uh, with Islam and, and animals. But, again, simultaneously, um, the treatment of animals, while in the legal theories of Islam, would be more, uh, not vegetarian, but, uh, not even necessarily animal rights, but but more humane than maybe necessarily in practice, and that goes for a lot of ideologies out in the world. And the conditions of dogs, while while pigs are considered unclean to eat, dogs are in a very low position. But keep in mind, even in the New Testament, Book of Revelation says outside of the adulterers, the spiritists, and the dogs, and dogs in uh, Islam are seen as negative. Now, in the Quran, this book, book points out. The little mention of dogs are not necessarily in a negative context, but in the hadiths, the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, um, th there seems to be uh, uh, where, where he said, angels do not enter homes that have pictures or dogs. And um, there's just a lot of negative connotations about dogs, and dogs are not seen as man's best friend in the Arab world. But they, that seems to be a tradition prior to the coming of Islam, all right? So, anyways, whatever you think about that, I just thought I'd mention it. It's an interesting read. He also explores vegetarianism and animal rights within the Islamic world and with even Islamic scholars. So, 
you know, take it or leave it. I think you'll uh, find the topic interesting. Peace.